Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 18 of Objective C on the Mac. In this tutorial, we're going to be continuing on with the memory management section and learning about object ownership in Objective C. So uh, the two previous tutorials were on memory management as well, and this is kind of a linked series of these three tutorials. So if you haven't watched uh, the previous two, you're going to want to watch those before watching this one. So anyway, that's just a precursor to this tutorial. So what is object ownership? Well, if you just want to keep the most basic of terms, you can remember that object ownership just means who owns what. So um, that's just uh, the, the very broad idea of what we're going to be talking about. So to represent this, we're going to go over to a little picture here. And I just called it who owns what. And that's uh, the main idea of object ownership. So here, we have two different objects that we haven't uh, learned about, and that's because we're going to create these in a second. So the computer class is just a, a little class we're going to create, and all it's going to have is an instance variable for a chip. So it's going to just contain a chip, and that's all we're going to work with it, or do with it. So the chip class is just going to be a chip, and that's uh, the essence of it. So the computer is going to have an instance variable of a chip, and when we create a new chip, we're going to want to call this uh, method called setChip. And that's just uh, basically the basics of what you have to know here. So what is going on? Well, main starts out here, and it creates a chip object. And it's also going to create this computer object. But the important one is this chip object right here. And the important thing is also that it has a retain count of 1. So what happens? Well, main creates this, this chip here. And comp is going to call set chip on the chip, so that it can get or it can point to the ad or the block of memory that chip is located in. So when we, when we call set chip, now our computer is going to or the computer's instance variable chip is going to be pointing to this block of memory right here, where chip was created. So that's uh, interesting, and that's what we've been doing before. We'd say. Um, we would just say that our chip is going to get the address of chip, essentially. So now our computer is pointing to chip, and main is also pointing to chip, or it contains chip. So um, two objects are now pointing to the exact same block of memory. So what happens now? Well, let's say we just call this set chip, and main doesn't have any use for this chip anymore. So now main is going to call a release message on this chip. So this is where the problems start. So if, if it calls a release message on chip, then the retain count right here, since it was at 1, is going to go down to 0. And that's going to deallocate the chip. So it opens it up to being overridden by anything, because the chip no longer really exists there anymore. Uh, it's not a chip object. It's just going to be freed memory. So obviously, this is going to create a huge problem, because now this chip is gone. And our computer is still pointing to this chip memory. So when we, when we call a comp set chip, it's still pointing to the block of memory that this chip was located in. But main, when it was done with it, it released it because that's what it's supposed to do. Because when it's done with it, it releases it. So when main releases this chip, now it's gone. And comp is still pointing to this chip, which is absolutely a huge problem because um, it's, it's freed memory. So... Comp, in essence, has to have a way of owning the chip or taking ownership of the chip so that when it wants to use it, it still has it. Main doesn't need it anymore, but comp still needs it. So we need a way for our computer to hold on or own this object. So that's what um, this tutorial is on. So uh, we're just going to create two quick classes here. And one of them is just going to be our computer class that we just talked about. And I'm just going to call it computer, and make sure you create the .h file. I don't know why that went into products, but I want to throw that back up into source. Um, let's create another uh, class here, and again, it's just another Objective-C class, and it's just going to be called chip, like we talked about uh, in the little image there. So now we have two classes. We have our computer and our chip. So let's just start out with chip here. Chip doesn't really have anything in its interface. It doesn't have to do anything. It's just essentially an object that we're going to put into our computer. So chip doesn't have any special function. But what we're going to do with it is override two um, different methods from the um, 
uh, we're going to override two different methods from NS object so that when we want to print out the chip, it will do certain things. So uh, NS string, uh, we're just going to be overriding our description method, and we talked about this before. So description just returns um, a description of um, the object. So we're just going to this is a chip. And uh, you might be thinking, ooh, is there anything we have to know about memory management here? Well, no, we did create a string, but this string is technically just auto release later. Um, it doesn't really have to, it doesn't really follow the memory management rules, but in essence, we didn't create it with alloc copy or new, so we don't have to worry about it. It's just going to be auto released technically. So now um, that's good, no problems there. Now let's go over to another method that we're going to use, and this is the dealloc method. We haven't talked too much about this, but essentially this is just the method that gets called when its retain count hits zero. So when chip hits a retain count of zero, dealloc is going to be called and this is what's going to happen. So first of all, um, the most important thing, if you're ever overriding dealloc, then you have to call super dealloc. Um, you always have to call this because it calls nsobjects dealloc, which does all the work for us. So super dialic is the important thing here because it does all of NS objects work. Um, because when we, again, when we call super dialic, NS objects dialic get, gets called and it does uh, the work behind the scenes that needs to get done to free the memory. So now um, the last thing we're gonna do is print out a message uh, once that's deallocated there. And NS log is just gonna say um, memory Bye bye. So that's uh, basically just what the um, that's all of our uh, that's all our dialog is going to do. So call super dialog, which we always have to do if we're overriding uh, dialog in, in in any class, because uh, we always need to get NS object to do the deallocation work for us. Now NS the NS log is just going to print out a message to say that uh, it was dialog. So that's uh, great, and now our chip class is done, let's head over to our computer.h here. So computer.h, again I said it's going to have an instance variable of a chip. So um, to recognize the chip, we have to import that class. So we're just going to say chip.h, and I don't need that at the end. Uh, so that's all we need to do, we need to import chip.h, and now we know what uh, chip is. So now we're just going to create a chip object, and uh, there we just created a chip object. And now we just need to have two different methods for this. Um, one is just the setter method. So to do this, we need void set chip. And um, all this is going to take in is a chip object. And uh, we're just going to call it new chip. So now we also want an accessor method for this, and this is just going to be um, returning the chip. So we want to return a chip object, and we're just going to call it chip. So that's uh, just the general thing that we're going to do here. We're going to set the chip, and we're going to return a chip. So now uh, we also want to head into our computer.h, and we're going to implement the two uh, methods that we just did here. So this is just the outline of the method, and now we're going to actually get into what they do. So um, we just want to do, uh, for return chip, or just our chip method, we just want to return the chip. And that's all we want to do. So that's uh, pretty simple. Now our set chip is a little different, and my voice just peaked there. But anyway, um, the set chip method is just going to um, essentially uh, set the chip that we pass in as parameters to our, our chip that we have in our class. So chip... And this is the way we've been doing it, but uh, this is going to change in a bit. So uh, sit, uh, chip gets new chip is what we've been doing uh, for the past few tutorials now. And uh, this just is what we have done because we think that, okay, if we pass in the new chip in parameters, then we want to set uh, the old chip with the new chip, right? So that's um, what we're going to leave it as for now, and that's what we're going to do. So now uh, that's all fully implemented, and now what we want to do is head over to the lesson one. And I've already got uh, computer.h imported here, so we don't have to worry about uh, anything else. Since computer.h already imports chip, we know what chip is as well. So computer.h is all we had to import. So now uh, we're going to create these two objects. So computer 
and we're going to create a new comp and it's going to be um, just going to be computer alloc and init and then the other thing we're going to do is create a chip and it's just going to be called chip gets chip alloc in it and that's all we have to do for that as well so now we have a computer object and a chip object so both of them start with a retain count of one but the important one is that chip is starting with a retain count of one so now we're going to call a little method here and we're going to say comp set chip and we're going to pass in that chip in parameters so now comp is going to get uh, since in our computer.h here we can see the chip gets new chip so that's what it's essentially doing. Set chip is just taking the address or where a chip is located in memory, and now comp is pointing to that memory as well. So now, technically, main is done with this object. So we can just say chip release, because chip is chip is done. Main, main doesn't need it anymore. And our computer is the only thing that actually has it. So we're going to NS log this, and all we're going to do is return an object. Or print out an object and that object is just going to be our comp and it's going to be uh, calling the chip getter method so we're just going to say comp and chip and there we go now comp, that's just the method that returns the chip object and now uh, we can also release our um, our comp so comp release so now let's see what happens here Sometimes it works because um, dialloc, technically, um, all dialloc really does is sets the memory up to be able to be freed, or, um, sorry, overridden by other things. So, technically, the chip is still in that same spot in memory, but if it's overridden by anything, then it screws everything up. So, um, the memory is freed when we call chip release, because chip started with a retain count of 1, when we call chip release, it goes to 0. So, technically... The memory for chip is gone, and we're gonna try to um, we're gonna try to print that memory out. So let's see what happens here. So let's go ahead, build and run this. And when we run this, oh, that's interesting. So we see here we have memory bye bye, which is what happens because we over uh, we were overriding our dialloc method in chip. So when we called chip release, it hit a retain count of zero, and the memory went bye bye because dialloc was called. Then we get uh, this little bad access. Um, basically, bad access just means that uh, you screwed up on your memory because this memory is uh, basically it's overridden, and um, so you can't access this. This is uh, this has been changed. This isn't the chip object that you um, originally assigned here. So bad access just me usually means that you screwed something up in memory, and it usually means that um, just the object that you're looking for doesn't exist anymore. So that's interesting. That's a problem, right? So how are we going to fix this? Well, essentially, um, like I said before, our computer object needs to take in or needs to claim ownership of this chip. So we're going to head back over to our computer.h here, and we're going to do something that's... Uh, we're going to talk about some memory management things here. So what are we going to do? Well, it needs to take whatever new chip is in parameters. When it takes in that chip, it wants to take ownership of that chip. So now we have to say new chip, and this is where we use retain. So now that just means that we're going to retain the new chip that comes in. So now the new chip, or the chip that it's pointing to, is going to get a retain count of two. And that's what we want, because now two objects hold this chip, right? So in essence, in our lesson uh, lesson 18.m file here, uh, this chip that we're pointing to now has a retain count of 2. And then when it's released, its retain count now goes down to, to 1. So it's still valid in memory, but main doesn't hold on to it anymore. The only thing that's holding on to it is computer, which is what we want. So now, let's go back to our computer.h here. And there's one more thing. We think this is all good and dandy, but what happens if we call uh, this set chip um, again? So what happens to the old chip? Uh, computer used to hold on to this chip, but now we're just changing its address. So the old chip is still in memory, and that's a problem. We need to get rid of that old chip. So what are we going to do? We're just going to do something like this. Chip release. 
So it gets old, it gets rid of the old chip because we don't need it anymore. We're going to say new chip is going to get, our chip is going to get the new chip. So we don't need the old chip, so we just release it, and uh, whatever memory was with the old chip is now released. Whatever uh, new chip has is retained, so now its retain count would be 2, and uh, chip, our old chip, or the chip instance variable, is now going to get the new chip. So um, since we set the retain count to 2, that means that two objects, in essence, should be holding this object. And when we go back to our code, we can see that the chip that this um, the main was pointing to is released. So the chip that we set to computer now has a retain count of 1, which is exactly what we want, because the, co the computer holds the address for the chip, and that's all that uh, we want. So now let's see how this works. Uh, when we build and run, let's see if everything's solved. And as you can see, this is a chip, and we were able to access that chip memory, no problems. So that's exactly what we wanted. Now, there's one more fine little detail that we have to be real, uh, to be mindful of. Anytime we have instance variables in our computer, uh, we need to get rid of these as well. Because um, when we release computer, um, we're releasing computer, but also every instance variable that in compu that is in computer needs to be released as well. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to go to computer.msdialloc. And we're going to override that. So uh, again, just void, and it's dialloc. And so we're going to send a release message to the chip that we own. So we're going to say chip release. And we're also going to just say uh, super dialloc, so we can deallocate the object that we're in. So anytime that you have um, objects inside of your uh, interface, you should usually just remember that you probably have to um, release these in your dialloc for the class. So now when we have when we are getting rid of computer, when comp release is called, we're also going to call our dialloc method. So the chip inside comp is also being released as well. So all the memory is now being released as it should be. So anyway, this was lesson 18 on um, object ownership. And again, the main idea is just who owns what. And if you have to um, own that object, you have to retain it. And we're also going to be learning a, a way to make this a lot easier. Um, I know this is seems really complicated, and um, it seems like there should be an easier way to do this. And believe me, there is a, a way easier way of getting this all done. And we're going to talk about that uh, coming up in uh, probably the next tutorial anyway, if uh, not really soon anyway. So we're going to be talking about a way that will make uh, this memory management stuff seem a lot easier. So anyway, if you have any questions, uh, please leave your questions in the comments below, and I'll be sure to get back to you, and you can send me a message, and please subscribe to the channel. Alright, see you next tutorial.